Okay, looks like we are here for yet another Wednesday. So glad you guys could make it. Uh, it is part two of painting this beautiful Latina Chinoa. So I'm very excited to be here with you. And we are also giving a painting away, but you do have to go on the Patreon site. And uh, so we'll go into detail with that. So we're learning about frisket, sequential masking, a lot of really good, interesting stuff. So uh, this is going to be a powerful live stream, I hope. So let's go ahead and authorize the chat. We do that every week and we'll do that this week as well. So I'm going to put in my password and just be one moment. Okay, and over here we do password. So let's see, crickets or do we have people today? Let's see, one, two, and uh, okay, for some reason it did not verify. That's weird. So give me one moment, I'm gonna try it again. then we're going to hit okay so the chat app is not working so we are going to have to live with that just make sure that I have the right the YouTube chat viewer yeah so what we're gonna have to do is I'm going to have to have another screen open so give me a quick I actually have to look on wow this is gonna be interesting let's see how we do I'm gonna get my laptop out and I'll watch the uh, I'll watch it with the laptop on the web page that's gonna be the only way to do it and I'll be a few moments so so I don't see your comments just yet. So uh, what I'm going to do is just begin. Now we're working on her hands because remember we went ahead and uncovered her hands. Now everything else is covered with frisket. Everything but the arms and the hands at this point. We went ahead and established the darks of the face and the hair and we worked on the drawing and this is where we are now. So give me just a one moment here. Let's see. Can we mute the sound? Sometimes there are interesting events, <laughs> but we get through them. So I haven't, you know, a one man show, so I've seen everything. So I am tech support, I am the talent, I'm everything. So it's all good, right? So let me go ahead and quickly. Okay. So now I see the chat. So who's ever there, just uh, go ahead and say hi. I'm going to do a quick hello. And we'll see. Uh, what I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do something totally interesting here. I'm going to put that laptop over here so I can see the program. Okay. So okay. So now I can see if anyone is chatting with me. That's good. So let's get to work. I don't see anyone. Uh, here anyway. Hey, Tone, how's it going? Good to see you. So as you can see, we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty with the chat today. What are you going to do, right? It's no biggie. So right now I'm going to start working on the fingers here. Mm. 
And the fingers are kind of soft edged. They're not really hard edged next to one another. I'm going to start with this pinky right here. I'm doing good, Tone. Thanks so much, my friend. Now, Tone was the winner of the ink giveaway. And have you tried those speedball inks yet? So as you can see, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit on those hands there. Maybe I can lighten it up just a bit. What do you think? Okay, that's good. Get a little bit of glare from the frisket. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and establish that pinky nail right there. And then remember, you always wanna use the softest erasers possible until you can't and then you go more you know you go darker that's important yeah everyone must be christmas shopping that's very weird right tone you know but they'll catch it because the last video has almost 244 views so if they don't catch it tonight, they're definitely going to catch it tomorrow or during the week. But I feel we might have a lot of latecomers. Hey, Gloria, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you can make it. All right. Tone says everyone must be Christmas shopping. <laughs> and I'm just painting her little fingernails there. And we're gonna just slowly develop those hands, you know? Nothing, yes, only 14 days left. That's so scary, right, for a lot of people, you know, with the Christmas shopping. go and just ever so lightly paying attention to the anatomy very important when you're working with the human figure you know the anatomy is really paramount and you know it's so important to be in this light mixture right now you have to stay so light and hey Rick how's it going good to see you so glad to see you Rick let me get rid of this uh, chat viewer because it really doesn't work. <laughs> so, And uh, what we will do is I'll put the picture of Chinoa up there. That might be a good idea. Let's see. Here we go. We'll just put her up here like this. And this way you guys can see what I'm painting. So that's cool. So I'm just adjusting the air a little bit, you know, and let's see. So I do recommend this program called Pure Ref. Have you guys seen it? Uh, it's really fantastic. It's good for Windows and for uh, Mac computers, Apple computers. So I highly recommend it. And I hope you guys get a chance because you definitely, it definitely works so much better when you are using your computer as your reference. It's really fantastic. 
Yes, happy Wednesday, Rick. So cool to see you. So cool to see Gloria and Tone. Thank you so much for coming by, guys. So we're staying ever so light. It's so important to be very, very, very light at this point. And once Now there's darks on the fingers here, but we're going to come to that later. So even though, you know, we... You know, there's a dark edge. We're not going to be premature with that. We're going to take our time. Also, this is a good time to use some of the freehand shields, you know, from one finger to another. So this finger right here is just slightly darker than the finger behind it. So I'm just going to create an edge with this freehand shield. I'm very far away from the surface. So I am making sure that I'm creating these ever so subtle edges here. And you know, when you have something like, you know, fingers with, you know, a high light sauce and everything like that, everything's high key, you know, having those edges are gonna be really important just to, you know, give a, I don't know, just to separate them, to really feel that separation. Otherwise it could look kind of weird. Just gonna put my reference in front of me here. Now you guys can't see pure wrath because it doesn't show up in the program. But it's right there. I can make my reference bigger. I can blow it up and still it always shows up on top. So little dagger strokes. And take your time there's no rush you know when you're painting so don't worry about how it looks just take your time follow follow the grain of the skin follow the way the light is hitting everything all that is very important do I ever adjust the ink mixtures no I pretty much stick with the uh, with the three, you know, uh, I do adjust for the background though. Sometimes it's really dark in the background tone. That's when you'll see me do that, but only then. And here's a tricky part right here with that hand. But we'll we'll get to that. But I do want you to notice that that's a tricky part right there. There goes the compressor. I might come back with that pencil and make some of those adjustments that I didn't make in the initial drawing. And that might be good rather than going in with the ink because with the pencil I could definitely make some more subtle changes here. I'm a good distance away and now I'm just going to do this side plane of the arm here just keeping everything really super light keeping my distance So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and work on the other side of her, the other hand, and because I want to keep things together, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead. So I'm just going to start with her fingernails.
I'm a good distance away because the further away you're going to get much better even even tone you know what I mean yeah it's getting louder <laughs> my poor compressor I killed it I kill compressors tone I'm the compressor terminator okay so now you can see I went ahead and just worked on the fingernails there and then I'm just going to start to create the forms of the fingernail of the fingers because even though they're subtle they're very high key there's not much light and dark there are subtle light changes that are going to help to describe the form which are very important you know oh you too huh tone that's cool that means you work a lot that's a good thing There we go. Let's go ahead and describe the form. Very subtle in this little pinky finger here. Very subtle. Incredibly subtle. So I'm a real I'm really a far distance away because I'm really creating subtle changes from light to dark, but very close in value. Okay. It's kind of nice when we have small groups like this sometimes, you know, you, you basically just get to hang out with a small group of people and you know, the, the large live streams, you know, the large amount of people are fun, but these are fun too. You know, because it's really not about numbers or anything like that. It's really about connecting. And that's why I do it, you know. Of course, I want to support myself, but, you know, my main motivation is, of course, you know, hanging out, talking about art, good people. That sort of thing. There's a little piece of, I don't know why I have that there. What's my reasoning? That's the question. It's been a week since I touched this piece. <laughs> it's been a few years, huh, Tone? I hope you get to paint more, my friend. Because I know you love it. Okay, so. I think it's a good idea to keep that on there. In retrospect. There we go. Yeah, you don't want, because that's going to be part of the forehead. I don't want a hard edge that I'm going to have to fix. Now, you can always use a freehand shield to get that really nice hard edge here when you need it. Just like that, you want to separate those fingers. So the important thing is to keep the live stream going regardless, you know? I mean, I do want it to be something that, you know, people can really know it's going to be there. And I think that's what makes YouTube great. Those channels, you just know, 
that they're gonna upload. You know what I mean? Now I'm not gonna go to a finished state with these hands. I'm just gonna start establishing them so I can get those and those hard edges and then we can go ahead and detail it still you know even with sequential masking the same um, philosophy still applies you know that you want to make sure that you bring the painting together uh, sequential masking is not an excuse to uh, go ahead and sort of you know finish the hands and then work on the eyes and finish the eyes and work on the, the no see that would be wrong it would be wrong for the reason that you know we're painting a person and not a series of features if we were painting a series of features like a like one of those like photorealistic paintings of you know a table with silverware that's fine because that doesn't have any life to it you want to create paintings that have a life and a breath to it. You can't do that if you're just going to kill it to death. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is, hey Gloria! Gloria says, Christmas Day, I'm going to have a live stream. I believe the 25th. Yep, it's going to be a Christmas live stream. So that means I got to get home in time. That's right. So Christmas falls on a Wednesday, Gloria? It does. You know what? We may do a special Christmas Eve live stream or something. I don't know. We That's going to be interesting. How am I going to do a Christmas live stream? I just have to get home. That's all, but definitely. So we gotta, I have to figure this out. Thanks for telling me, cause now I have to plan. Now I definitely have to plan. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're right, Gloria. going to be a Christmas live stream. That's pretty interesting. And we're just going to clean this up. Now remember I said I was going to come back in with the pencil uh, for that second, that first hand here. And so right here, there was some interesting things going on with the hand. So, so right here is the heel of her hand here. And we got some very subtle little light changes right there. Then it comes down here. And then, you know, always look at the negative spaces here. And then okay so that's good so I basically I'm just gonna give an indication and then I'm just gonna come in and just lightly sort of establish those darks and like I said I'm not gonna go too deep into all the details because I don't want to bring that up way further Oh, there's a New Year's Day one. Oh my God, this is going to be a festive holiday live stream. I wonder how many people are going to be uploading uh, on Christmas and New Year's. And I'm a good distance away. I'm just going ahead and darkening that. Now over here, we're just going to establish this dark here. So 
See that? Nothing too crazy. Just, just establishing it. And then, once that's established, then we're going to peel away the frisket. But I want to make sure that we have a good indication of what's happening. Created a nice edge. And then we can go back and peel away the, her face and start working on her face and what I might, might do is go ahead and put the hands back on you know the frisket of the hands back on but we'll see we'll see how it goes so with sequential masking it's almost it's almost like playing chess you know you really have to strategize you know what you want to do There's a couple of wrinkles here in his hand Hey, Super, how's it going? How's everything? So Super says, Tim, you airbrush small detail on paper, copy size paper. That's correct. Is this because of control and muscle memory or is it hard to do for me? No, working this size is better. Hey, Willie, good to see you. Working this size is better because you get to, uh, you know, you get to put it on the table. It's not huge. And it teaches you control. And I think you're going to have a good time working in a size like this. Another reason, it's easy to uh, frame. You're not faking it by working big and then photographing it small to make it look tighter. You are really learning how to airbrush when you go this big. Uh, my students always work this size. And they have a good time and they enjoy it and they continue working this size after the class. So they agree with me after, you know, the class that this size, the A4 paper is really fantastic, you know. So Ron, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you can stop by, Ron. So cool. Thank you. So right now I'm just establishing the hand, so to speak, you know, and oh, so uh, Wendy, let me see. I'm just going to very quickly just chat with Wendy here because let's see. So Wendy said that she's having a hard time getting in. Okay, I just told her to go to my YouTube page. That's good. Let's go back to there. So Wendy's trying to get on. Uh, oh, thank you. Ron says he enjoys the show. And and will I learn this in your course? Definitely. My course is very thorough. And you're going to learn why using this is, is better. And everything that you learn here, you learn in my course, but more intense and you really will come away with a really good knowledge of the airbrush and control and that's what i really profess is control and really try and push so it's good to see you willie how you been my friend we're just going to Go ahead and establish the dark. Now, there's really not much dark going on with, you know, these hands. Just an establish of that. So, what I'm going to do now is I want to uh, peel away the face. But if I can, let me see. Where did I put her hands? <laughs> That's a good question. Where is this young lady's hands? Kind of sounds like something Dr. Frankenstein would say. Uh now, where did I put her hands? Oh my God. I had them over here, unless I put them someplace else. Did they fall? No. Now I have a lot of wall here. Huh. I got to figure out what I did with her hands. Maybe I put it put them on this wall here let's see where are her hands 
Let me look over here. Oh boy. Well, if I can't find her hands, then that just means that we are not going to be frisky. We just have to be more careful. So I think I might have destroyed the hand frisk it. So moral of the story, always, always <laughs> save the hands. Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Thank you, Willie. I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and remove her face. This is going to be interesting. And I want to make sure when I remove her face. You don't want to do it at the corner because that's when two cuts come together. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's see. Almost, guys. Now, when you peel this off, you want to be careful. You don't want it to tear. It's going to be very slow. And I'm going to save her face. There we go. Okay, that was successful. And let me go ahead and remove this as well. We don't need this anymore. Very slowly, we don't want to tear. Very slowly. There we go. Let's save these. You never know. Just like the hands. I needed those hands and now I don't have them. Okay, so here we are. So now we have, we're going to make this like that. <laughs> yeah, that was scary, huh? That was scary, Gloria, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and we're going to start slowly and we're going to work on the hands. Let's see if we can lighten this up. Oh, that's too light, right guys? Whoa, that was like super light. Okay, so let's start with her hands here, her face. And so I have the PS the compressor at 25 PSI, but I also have the I want a Mac valve and the pack valve. So I'm really, really, really choking down that air. I would say I probably all together would probably be around 10 PSI or so. remember what I do on this eye I'm going to do on the other eye because I don't want it to be I want those eyes to be developed together remember the eyes are going to be the focal point of the painting so the eyes always has to be further along than everything else of course with sequential masking you might get to the eyes a little bit later because you want to create those edges so so I sent, I did send Wendy uh, to go to my Facebook, I mean my YouTube page, but I don't see, I did message her. So let's see if she can get in. I'm going to try and send her this and see if that works. We'll hit copy and we'll send this to Wendy real quick. See if that works. If not, uh, 
you know, we'll see. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the job at hand. So we're going to go to the second eye right here. So with the eye, you never want to be too far ahead from the other eye. And I'm very, very light. Using my light mixture. And I have the Mac valve and the pack valve going in my Badger Extreme Patriot Arrow with the modified trigger. So I just sent Wendy another link and hopefully she'll get in. This is all very soft edged in here. No masking needed when edges are soft, right guys? So. As you can see, working those two eyes together. And now the eyebrows. It's going to be very light because I'm going to make changes, you know. So this is just a very general indication of her eyebrows. And that's what we do. We sort of just bring it up very slowly. So I'm going to work from the finger to the middle because I don't want to darken the finger while I'm working on her eyebrow here. This eyebrow kind of stops right here. It's interesting. So this eyebrow goes all the way in, but this one kind of stops right there. That's kind of interesting. If I want to lighten, you want to paint in three dimensions. So I'm going dark with the eyebrow, but then if I want to go lighter with the tone, I just move up a little bit or further away from the surface with the airbrush and it naturally lightens up. So let's use the freehand shield so we don't uh, contaminate the finger with the darks here. There we go. So we keep that finger sort of coming forward. And that hand is really, those hands are just indicated. And that's all we really did was indicate those hands. We're going to come back with more detail. But the whole technique is basically working from light to dark. And this whole side of her face is pretty much in shadow. And you want to go perpendicular and not parallel to the freehand shield just like that so let's see what's happening here uh, tone says I really think about getting that brush watching you sing it oh yeah you're gonna love it this is an amazing airbrush and when you do get it I'll let you know my modifications that just improves this airbrush a hundred times over. 
Um, you know, I definitely can back up, you know, any claims, you know, after, you know, my modifications that this airbrush does give the, you know, the custom microns a run for their money. And, uh, but like anything else, Tone, you got to get used to it. You know, the custom micron is a different airbrush. So you have to master this airbrush just the same. So if you're used to using Iwata and you come to Badger, you're going to have a learning curve and the same thing, same, same. But, you know, being an Iwata guy for like six years and now working with this one, I can honestly say that this definitely uh, does give Iwata a run for their money with this particular airbrush and my modifications. So there you go. So you see how she's just slowly kind of just she's slowly going to evolve here. And that's what we're working on. And we're just going to clean up the edges as we go. Let me put my gloves back on. And I think we are going to uh, remove the background pretty soon. The frisket, that is. But before we do that, let's go ahead and establish some of the darker areas here. Work on her lips here. And we'll use a freehand shield so we can Pull those darks away from the hand and that whole perpendicular thing and not parallel. Sometimes you have to do parallel, but as a rule, you want to definitely do the perpendicular thing. A little bit of just a little bit of a, her cheek sort of comes out just a little bit right there. Very interesting. And we're going to deepen this dark as we go. But as you can see, we're just starting to really feel that head. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad to see you today. From Canada. Canada in the house. Let's establish the dark here of her nostril. And going further away. I want to lighten it. You paint in three dimensions, guys. And you want to darken it, you just get closer. Just like that. Now we're doing some very subtle work right now. Very subtle, very early stuff, you know. So you should get your inks by Monday, Brad. So that's cool. Beginning, you're doing a lot of drawing with the airbrush 
making sure you're getting these angles correctly, that sort of thing, and then using freehand shields like here to create some of these beautiful hard edges. There we go. So you see this nostril sort of creates a little indentation here. And then it's a little dark. And then we can go ahead once that dries a little bit. So I'm going to leave that alone. I don't want to, I don't want to wet. That's still a little wet. So I don't want to erase too quick. Yeah, you'd be surprised. First class usually gets to you guys within five days, five business days. So, uh, so that would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sat Monday, maybe Tuesday. But it gets there pretty quick because I had a couple of people I sent the inks, a couple of customers in Canada. And uh, I know different parts of Canada, you know, I think one person was in uh, Toronto, in the Toronto area. So as you can see, I'm just calming things down. You know, once I didn't go in and erase while it was wet. You never want to erase when it's wet. You always want to erase when it's dry. It's very important. So Wendy must have a hard time getting in to, from where she is. So that has to be on her end. That's a bummer. It's always good to see Wendy. Hopefully she'll get in before the end of the live stream. And now we're just going to work on these subtle light changes here. And I'm nice and far away and creating that real softness of her skin in this real soft light. Now, there are times when you will see things where you can make some changes and it's not too late. And this is one of them right here. My original drawing was a little off. So what I'm going to do is just correct it so this comes over here like this and we do have that established however uh, this is much straighter see that so we go ahead and make sure we put that in so we're going to use our freehand shield here and we're just going to darken up this area while maintaining the light of that hand. If we had the hands frisk it, uh, we could just frisk it that up, but looks like I lost it or, you know, lack of hindsight or foresight, I drew it out. So never draw anything out. You might need it. You might change your mind. Okay, so right here, we have a dark that's going along here. So let's go ahead and establish this. And you don't gotta, you know, that's the thing about my technique. You don't have to make it dark right away. You get there, you know. There's no rush in making it dark. go and it's kind of soft edged here so I'm not going to go crazy trying to use frisket here or a hard edge or a freehand shield because it's pretty soft edged yes we do Gloria says uh, she misses Wendy we definitely do hopefully she'll be able to get on
Okay, so you see how we're establishing those hands. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. And let's go ahead and work on those lips. It's a little bit dark, a dark edge right here. Now you don't want to go ahead and start outlining stuff. You really want to pay attention to what's happening uh, on those edges. Are they values? You know, what values are they? And, and remember, we're starting out light. So I can see that the edges are uh, probably, or it looks like they're created by the value of the chin. So we're just going to very lightly create that edge by darkening the chin, at least over here. And then over here, we have a little bit of an edge here. Can lower that a little bit. Just watch your values, don't go too dark. Make sure you get your shapes correct. All those things are very important. And then over here, it looks like the shape is created with the shadow on the lower lip here. So you see how it's dark on the top on one side and dark on the bottom on the other side. It's really paying attention to what's happening with the lights and darks. You don't want to just say lips and just paint lips and let your subconscious paint lips. You want to see the values of what they are, what's happening. That's more important. And you'll see that it's not as it appears. A little bit of a hard edge right here and then sort of moves out like that same thing here just a little bit of a hard edge right there and then the rest is created the shape by this shadow and then over here so you see it's the subtleties of where the dark is so the dark is on the lip there but over here it's on the chin so you see how those little subtleties of what side is getting the value, right? That's what you want to look at. Not necessarily, you know, the shape, but what size of the shape. Uh, Willie says, Tim, do you ever hear from Kiva anymore? I haven't seen her in chat in forever. Once in a while I do hear from her. I know she's very busy with her career in uh, doing murals. She was on TV and everything. So she's doing really well. And I haven't, I don't hear from her too often, unfortunately. Yeah, I miss her as well. Okay, so you see right now we're still slowly creating the value tapestry sort of thing here. Little soft edge over here. So now what we're gonna do is continue sort of creating uh, her form in, in light and shade. So right here, we have this dark that we started, remember we started and then we're just going to continue going darker. But also there's this nice, nice soft shadow right here. I'm far away. So you see I'm a good distance away. And being a good distance away you can get those really soft gradations.
Oh, I wish I had those. Uh, wish I had the frisket that I cut earlier last week. That would really come in handy right here. Now working per perpendicular, it kind of saves me from going into that other finger accidentally. Not parallel. See, I can create that edge on that hand there. Sometimes all you have to do is create the edge and you can't get rid of it and it just stays there. So, so this is good. You're learning about freehand shields and its importance and their importance. Everything's looking dark right now, but everything is super light because we are working. Let me see if I could subtly make this a little darker. There. Maybe that's a little bit better. And over here, we want to get the turning of her chin as it turns away. So as you can see, we're sketching right now, and that's all we're doing is sketching. So looking at this, you can see that uh, I went too far down with this eyebrow there. So I can just fix that. And what's happening is, is that it's going up over here, and rather than go down. So. Now, this is important because you want to really check and see that you get the values correct. So the angle on the reference, we're looking at about 11 o'clock. So 11 o'clock, so that's telling me that it comes out right about here. And we'll just, I'm just going to quickly draw that out. Hey, what's up, Ray? Good to see you. How's it going? All right. So glad you can stop by, my friend. Oh, man. So that's good. It's better late than ever, my friend. So what we're doing is I'm just going to really... Just get an indication like the relativity of this angle here. I get this wrong and everything's going to be wrong. So this is very important to get this right. So we're going to be a good distance away and we're going to create that side plane here. We're very light. So very light and subtle as you can see. There we go. And then over here, we're going to create this sort of underplane. And then what's very interesting is that right here is almost no indication of any value change here, very light. That's very subtle. So you don't want to put anything that's not there, right guys? So I know we see a nose and we see an underplane and we just want to go ahead and darken that. But let's not be premature. Let's really understand what we're seeing. Uh, so Ray said he finished the commission and the client was really happy with the results. Now for some fantastic, Ray. That's great. And Ray and Willie wants a new Jeep. That's cool. That would be cool. I hope you get that new Jeep, Ray. Uh, Willie, that would be fantastic. I don't know how good you are, so I don't know if Santa's going to get it for you. <laughs> Boy, I can go for a nice cup of coffee right now. Oof. Oh, 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to continue making small corrections. This is the NOC 3.8 by Mono. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue modeling this lip there. And then slowly but surely we're getting rid of any of the pencil lines, that sort of thing. So let's continue just modeling the form of this side plane. I'm a good distance away. There we go. And then we could go ahead and squint our eyes, right? You want to squint your eyes and really see the light and dark patterns. And by doing that, I can see that, you know, this is much darker on this side. So I'm just going to dust that, see? And just by paying attention to the values, you start seeing that that hand is coming forward and it's covering her eye there. And that's what, you know, you want to do at this stage. Good distance away. There we go. So everything is all very light, very airy, very sketchy. And I see too many people going too dark too early. No reason for it, except making life really difficult. So look how light I am. I'm very light. I'm, I'm living in the light mixture right now. There's no even thought, remote thought in my head about going to the medium mixture. So, you know, if you go ahead and, you know, order a, you know, if you go take a class with someone else, you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to do that one painting. But anyone who's taking a class with me will tell you that you don't just learn how to do that other painting. I'm teaching you guys how to see. You're going to learn how to become a better artist, how to teach yourself and how to grow on your own. Any good teacher... Why do I say that? Because I studied with the best at the National Academy School of Fine Arts, the Art Students League, High School of Art and Design. And, you know, if you learn from the best and you have great teachers, it's going to rub off on you. And that's why if you study with me, you're going to learn how to do better on your own. You don't want to be somebody who is stuck going to someone's class over and over again. And, you know, that wouldn't be good. You want to take a class where you can leave that class and continue getting better. Yes, Tone, a good cup of coffee would be fantastic. Uh, oh, good, but not that good. <laughs> That's funny. So you see how lightly I'm just... Defining the forms, the, the skeletal structure of her. And I think we can go ahead and uh, lift the clothes. Now we got to be very careful pulling this up because I don't, we want to leave the background, okay? So we're going to be slow. Slow, you're going to have less of a chance of tearing. Nothing else matters but not tearing. So I'm just going to very slowly. Now, normally I wouldn't have the frisket on for a whole week, but I didn't want to do anything off camera for you guys. I wanted you guys to see the whole process. I'm going to save this frisket, the hair. This is the hair and the blouse. The reason why I'm doing that is because I have to soften this edge here. I'm taking my time. Now this is paper, mind you. This isn't, uh, you know, so see how far away I am? That's not good. So I'm going to go closer. And you can feel it that the paper wants to come up. But see, I'm peeling it against itself. 
Real slow, guys. Slow, slow, slow. Okay, let's go ahead and put the hair over here. Stick it on the wall. Try and make the painting look beautiful as you can, but don't get hung up on how it looks, you know, in the early going. Try and make it look beautiful, but don't get hung up, you know? Notice the process. Know that it looks like this for a reason. You know, you, you want these hard edges. You can't get these hard edges otherwise. So you're gonna sacrifice it looking perfect at one stage or another, but you're still trying to make it look as beautiful as possible. Okay, guys? Let's see, Ray says, don't lift up, keep smooth side of the frisket down on the paper and pull like that. Yes. So you see how you just sort of very slowly pulled it against itself and then you're in good shape. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and start working on some of these softer edges here in her hair. We're just going to soften this up a little bit. And we're going to take our time with it. very light. I'm just going to build that edge up, you know, I'm going to soften that up. I'm just going to show you how we establish it. And then we can take, always work on the softest eraser possible. That's really important. And we'll just slowly lift that up. And we want to go with the softest first. And then if you have to go harder, then you go harder with the eraser. But we'll soften that up, no problem. So what you can do is you can go with just the next hard eraser and see if that works. And then finally go with the hardest eraser and see if you can soften that edge up and voila, it starts to soften up. See that? Nice soften up. And then you could just begin softening things up here. Just like that. Yes, the promo is still on, Brad asked. And of course, it's that's what's up top here, as you can see. Uh, this website. So if you go ahead and join Patreon, uh, it's $4.99 a month. You can do it for one month. So if you just join for the month, you're in the drawing for winning this uh, really pretty wonderful portrait. Uh, this of uh, Alice Say. This portrait right here. And that is done with this technique. So it would come framed and delivered so you know or just cost you 4.99 to enter and then you can just either continue supporting me on patreon per month 4.99 or you can just go ahead and cancel that's up to you so all you have to do is just join and canceling is easy one two three if that's what you want to do for 4.99 
to get a chance to win an original painting, I think that's pretty darn good. But that's up to you guys. So we have a very small, we still have a small live stream. So your chance of winning are pretty great. So let's continue to model her skull here. And you can see we have this shape here. And you can see that the shadows sort of come right around here. And then over here, we have some shadows on this side. Everything is very light right now. We're getting there slowly, no rush. And so definitely, if you go to my Patreon page, let's see. So here's my Patreon page. And so if you click here and select when you go to the, the site that's up there, and as friend of the artist, you will receive all the past live streams in their entirety. Uh, those are some live streams that aren't on YouTube. And you will also see my painting process from start to finish. I'll also go ahead and once in a while put up videos that aren't available elsewhere. And I'm going to start doing that more. So that's pretty good. So only $4.99. Of course, there's a $9.99 program and a $19.99 program. So $4.99, like I said, it's not a bad thing to, you know, win a painting that, you know, is, I feel is uh, worth a lot of money and will be worth even more money as time goes on, God willing. Okay, so remember, we're constantly working on the drawing at this stage, seeing where, uh, uh, seeing... So uh, let's see, uh, Ray says, I'm not sure, but is that quid pro quo? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it's a really good thing, you know. I see people drawing dolphins and they have all these people on Patreon, you know, doing cute little dolphin, dolphin paintings, you know. And, you know, people are on, on there, you know, supporting them and uh you know so i think it's a really good thing and i think the more people join the patreon i think it's going to uh you know be good for those who are currently supporting me on patreon everything guys i love you guys 100 percent, and i do this anyway but all this stuff costs money you know two hours i'm here every wednesday i could be making money but i do this because i want to I want to have something available for you guys. So, you know, those who can help out, help out. That would be great. Those who can't, that's great too. I'm still here for you guys. So, I'm in it because I love it. No other reason. So, let's go ahead. So you guys, you know, on Wednesday nights, you guys get that New York City education that I had to win scholarships to get in, into these schools and study with this. So it's not just airbrush. You guys are learning a lot of stuff here. A lot of really, really uh, stuff that, you know, I had to take two buses in the subway each way. So, you know, if... You know, people can support someone painting dolphins. You know, I hope, you know, somebody could, you know, not think it's too bad to help me out. Plus, it's a chance to win a good painting, guys, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I think it comes out, uh, like, on, like, on the first or something like that, or the anniversary of that month. Uh, so that I am not sure, but I don't, I just, I think you might be charged for the upcoming month and then it would be a month from there. But like I say, you guys could cancel, but I just want everyone to have a chance of winning this particular, uh, uh, you know, this particular painting. I think it's a great painting. And if you're a student, 
It'll be great to have one of those paintings to see. Ray says, uh, it's really quid pro quo and supporting you is a real bargain. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ray. And, you know, we're, we're a good group here, you know, and I really enjoy it. And I'm, like I said, those are only those who can. You know, I, I'm pretty hard up on money, so I definitely understand, you know, definitely during the holidays. So, believe me, definitely understand how tough things are. Things are tough all over, right? So, definitely feel you. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to darken this area up a little bit more. We really want to feel that hand over that eye there. That's what we want to do. Okay, so remember we were working on this, this area here. Always go with the softest possible eraser. And then if you need to, go with a darker eraser. Okay, so not darker, but a more aggressive eraser. And let's see, uh, Gloria says, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Gloria, I appreciate that so much. So let's go ahead and start doing a little more subtleties here. Now, as I'm seeing that, you know, as that hand is coming forward, that this area is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna be a good distance away and I'm just going to darken this area. There we go. Smooth that out. There we go. And let's pull this out where this eye socket sort of starts here. And let's use our not so aggressive eraser and get that shape just like that. There we go. And so let's darken this up here. So what we're doing is we're just slowly creating form. And so we have the hair, we have the sleeves all uh, uncovered. And I'm just going to slowly darken this area right here. Remember, I'm just slowly darkening it up. Keeping a good distance, making this nice and soft. One of the reasons why I like, uh, you know, Mr. Roscoe is how soft he made his edges. And, um, you know, it is his later work, you know, how beautiful and soft, and I get that, and that's really important in, in my painting. I'm just gonna soften up these edges, and then here, I'm just gonna make sure that we get this beautiful smile here. There we go. And then we're just going to slowly darken this eyebrow here. We are not in any rush and we're not worried about whether it looks like her. Do not worry about whether it looks like your model at this point. Different things, different details can create a likeness. If you're looking for a likeness right now, you might as well just stop painting because you're not going to be worrying about the large forms. You're not going to be worrying about, uh, you know, making things dark slowly and going from the general to the specific. 
If you're worried about making it look like her, you are going to mess up. So just pay attention to everything and then it'll come out. So that's so important. So I can't stress that enough. go and same here if I squint my eyes I can see that this value is pretty dark over here and that's very important and then also the value difference from the eyelashes in the shadow are pretty close to the shadow that's adjacent to those eyel eyelashes and that eye There we go. And we can also continue using, since we don't have the frisket, continue using the freehand shield. And let's get that dark. There we go. So we want that hand coming forward. Now one of the things that we can do is we want to make sure we don't have any kind of line there. So we're just going to make that dry a little bit. Let's do the same here. And this is also where you want to do that perpendicular, not parallel. I went parallel there and I created a line just to illustrate how important that particular rule is. So we're going to take this eraser and we're going to try and get rid of the dark on the edge of that finger. There we go. And by doing that, you're going to create a little better realism. You just want to feel that finger coming, coming in front of her eye there. So important. And it's just that little bit of uh, line that we want to put. We want to put that line there. It's our instinct, right? So we want to make sure that we uh, don't uh, don't fall into the instincts. So I was gonna, Willie, I was gonna fix the, uh, pretty funny, I want to go fix the chat, but the chat's not working. Uh, I think I updated it and needed to start my computer, updated that particular app, and for me to restart it, it would have ruined the live stream. So that's why there's no chat window today. And of course, the hair we're going to establish. So this is where, you know, you're going to pay the price for having those really wonderful clean edges here. But that's okay. We knew the cost coming in, so no problem. So I'm just going to start establishing the hair a little bit. Notice how I'm moving around a lot, guys. Moving around, so important. So that's crucial, key. So we'll just look at the hole right now. There is no rush to get rid of pencil lines at this point. So the pencil lines are your guidelines. So, you know, keep the pencil lines there when you can uh, because you're going to need them. Now let's go ahead and continue drawing out this here. And what we're going to do is do the uh, shadow side of her eye. So see that. And let's see. I just heard. Be right with you. Okay, so right now we're doing the shadow side of her eye. Hold on one moment for me, guys. I'll be right with you.
just one moment. Just give me one moment, guys. I'll be right there. I am hearing my, <laughs> let's see, okay, here we go, someone is texting me like crazy. Okay, almost there, guys. Okay, I'm back. Thanks. You know, when family text, you definitely have to check it out, especially if they know I'm live streaming, so it must be important. So, so that's good. So it's not a bad thing. You know, with family, you always got to worry, right, guys? That's the thing, you know? Okay, so, you know, see how slowly she's coming along, you know, it's, it's no rush. Yes, always when you're airbrushing. <laughs> That's so true, Tone, isn't it? Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and continue and just adjust this. So look at this badger, the way it has, you know, with the Mac valve and the pack valve and just the micro adjustments that you guys are able to get, which is really fantastic. Uh, Gloria, I hope you have a great night and uh, it's always fantastic to see you. And I really appreciate you coming by. So that's so cool. So you see, just a little bit, I'm not worried about looking like Shinoa right now. Let's go ahead, and now this is beautiful little crease here. Cute little crease, and we're going to go ahead and establish that. Just like that. Just continue darkening. There we go. And so as you can see how it's just sort of developing so slowly. And that's what you want. You want it to be a slow development. You, you know, just like, you know, the vintage portrait that we did last month, you know, it didn't didn't come together all at once. It took it took time. There we go. And just developing everything.
and it's a little more volume here on her eyebrow there. Same thing here. We're just going to slowly create the volume needed. And remember, we have that secret weapon, which is the white pastel, which is really fantastic. And that's really going to help us out. Right here, we can go ahead with that soft eraser. How big is the color line paper? It comes in, let me see the exact size for your tone. Uh, it's pretty big. I know Ray knows offhand, but let me see if I can get it for you. That size is 19 and a half by 25 and a half. It's 184 pounds. So 19 and a half, yes, exactly. And uh, so, and I cut it to A4, which is eight and a half by 11. That seems to be the magic size for me, you know, because it's easy to ship. You know, you want to sell your work and you want to make it easy to ship. So you want to make it easy to get into a show if you enter it. And so all those different things, you want it to easy to frame. So all those different things. Uh, are important considerations when deciding a size of your work. Okay. Remember, never ever go ahead and try to erase when it's still wet. Please, at least take a minute before you touch it. And now I can start maybe think about developing the hair a little bit her hair now the background is still in still has frisket around it so that's you know we are keeping that going like that okay So if I develop this ear, uh, this eye, I'm going to make sure I develop this eye. Keep them going, you know. Tone says he never works small. So yes, definitely give it a try, Tone. I think you're really going to like it. Uh, it's just, uh, there's an intimacy about it. And, uh, you know, it just speaks to me like when I was a kid and I used to paint on my mom and dad's uh, dining room table. So... There we go. So you see how little by little I'm softening that up and there's no rush and just softening those edges. And that's what you have to do once you, you know, use the frisket. It's going to take time to soften up those edges, but patience is everything. That's like the main thing is patience. So that's the most important thing. So let's go ahead and remove the frisket and we're going to remove it everywhere here. So we're just going to slowly pull that up.
I'm putting my hand underneath and holding it. Okay. And now I'm just going to continue lifting that frisket. And you can see it's nice and clean. There you go. So as you can see, we have a very, very good uh, beginning. I'm not going to need that background. So as you can see, you know, we have a lot of cleaning up to do. And that is par for the course when using Frisket. And I'm just going to, with the aggressive eraser, just soften this edge here. There we go. And then we're going to come in and we're going to fix that edge. There we go. So you can see we have some really nice, beautiful hard edges here, which really makes a big difference. And now we can work the whole ensemble here. So, you know, like I over here, we can go ahead and establish some of that hair here. go and just quick indications of where we're going to do the hair that sort of thing Now, what you have to do is make sure you don't get ahead of yourself. Keep it slow. Keep, don't worry about having it looking like her. You don't care. At this point, you cannot care about a likeness. That's the least that you want to do. That's the last thing you want to care about is whether it looks like her at this point. So let's continue uh, with her eye here. There we go. might seem a little dark but it has to catch up to other areas but try and keep things as light as possible and over here slightly darker And of course, continue softening up the edge of the hairline so that frisket never happened. That's what we're doing, just slowly softening that up. Little by little, guys.
you can see we are really fixing that hairline and it's a lot easier than than you would think it is So it's pretty cool that, you know, we're working with the, with the freehand shields and, uh, you know, learning a lot about, about, you know, masking and sub sequential masking. I think all those things are very important uh, in creating, you know, some really nice effects. And so I, I think this is a very good, uh, Good live stream series for you guys. Okay, so you see how I'm just developing those hands a little bit, slowly but surely. I do the corner of her eye. At this really low pressure, I don't have too much worries about spidering. And we're going to use our freehand shields. We're going to create some of those darks. Reiterate them. There we go. Right here. Reiterate these darks. Perpendicular, not parallel. It's really a very good principle. And uh, it works and it just saves you a lot of headache. See if we can shape those lips a little better here. There we go. And her eyebrows. You're going to make adjustments along the way. That's natural, guys. And you can see the bottom part of her nose is more, more established by the reflected light over here on the center part of her nose there. So we're going to really just ever so slowly develop this. Just like so. And then over here, we have a nice dark. There we go. Let that dry. There's some erasing to do, and we're just going to develop that slowly. Don't get fixated into one area. Keep moving around. Now 
This comes over here and then comes up. There we go. And the definition sometimes is the light next to the dark as opposed to the dark on or line. So it usually is a value next to a, adjacent to a lighter value that creates the shape. And where does this end? I'm going to let that dry because I do see there's a slight adjustment to be made. Okay, so, up. Oh, looks like my battery is running low. So let me go ahead and see if I can put my, uh, one second. My laptop battery is a little bit low, so that means I just have to go ahead and plug it in so give me two shakes of a lamb's tail and I will be back in business let's see so we got this and we are back in business okay so all right so let's continue okay so we were going to go ahead and adjust this part of her lips here. A little bit light there. And then looks like stops right about there. And I think that's important, you know, where the corner of her mouth stops. Same thing here, a little more subtlety going on here. Just making sure that the edges are right. That's very important. Edges are paramount. Just a little more eye showing here. And I'm just going to shape the eyebrow a little bit. Just a little bit more. And then we have a little bit of a dark accent right here. Nothing too much, just a little bit. There we go. And then it's a little bit lighter right here. 
Now, are these going to be much darker? These are just relationships I'm looking at, which is which are value relationships. going to continue darkening these shapes here and little by little just bringing things together so what I'm doing now is creating that tonal framework that's important and you want to create that framework so when you do go in with the medium mixture subsequently with the dark mixture, you're all set up. That you have these value relationships. Not only that, you have the shapes correct as well. So all those different aspects are so important. freehand shield to get some of these dark underneath perpendicular and not parallel so important that's a really important principle and you know they don't teach that uh, in airbrush classes but that's so important because that's really going to save you a lot of trouble fixing stuff because if you go parallel, you're going to create a dark edge along. You don't want to do that. So that's important. Make sure that dries, but what I want to do is uh, shorten this a little bit because it comes out a little bit too much, and that's going to be very good. Let's go ahead and see if we could, with the non-aggressive eraser, start shaping her eyes a little bit. So notice the beautiful, uh, the beautiful ability to do like pencil, like mechanical pencil, like detail with this airbrush. Of course, you know you have to practice. You're not going to be able to do that right off the bat. 
but know that you know as you grow your airbrush grows with you and that's so important Okay, so that's nice and dry now. So let's go ahead and sort of shorten that value right here. Let's sort of cast shadow underneath her nose. Not the cast shadow, that's actually a form shadow. Cast shadow would be over here. go so look at that it's 1127 so that's good that means that I was involved with the painting and that's a good thing when you kind of get lost in your work that's always what we strive for isn't that right guys so as you can see we are getting a really nice sense of the light and dark we developed the hands uh, we removed a frisket so now we're going to start slowly darkening everything and bringing everything together so it's um, it's really going as planned and like I say you don't worry about whether it looks like the model uh, not at this stage you worry about sticking with the program program is going from light to dark how many times do I see people go too dark too early because they just don't have the patience and patience is everything so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly erase some of the excess pencil lines I think we can do that now And some of those superfluous pencil lines get in the way. And as we darken things, all of these values are going to lighten up, so no worries. And then over here, we can just establish this side plane by the nostril. And like I say, you know, it's it's just, you know, sticking with the program and, and knowing that, you know, with patience uh, comes reward. There we go. Okay, you see how just little by little the the likeness is coming we don't have to worry about the likeness brad says looks great tone says looks great thank you so much brad have a great night and so it is 11 30 so that's it for me so guys i hope you have a great week and uh happy holidays i will see you guys next Wednesday and also I'm going to be doing some live streams on Facebook because I'm going to be doing a lot of things with uh, digital painting uh, showing you guys you know how much fun digital painting is but not only that but its applications to your airbrush painting so I think that's pretty cool so you know Stay tuned on Facebook. Every now and then I'm going to go ahead and do a live stream there too. So I hope you guys have a great week. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for spending your 
uh, Saturday or Wednesday night Saturday oh my god let's see where are we okay so we are live until I can figure out what's happening with this program here oh I see what happened this is in front of it okay guys take care